Hey, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, all right? Make sure you log it in and you remember to check out my good, 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 good friends over at the Broken Table Podcast live on YouTube. These are some of my good friends. They have some of the best topics going on. They're talking about a lot of good things. And also, they like to put over the Prince Nana dance. Hey, I swerve and I drive. I swerve and I drive. Hey, hey. <laughs> Don't forget, tune in, log on to the Broken Tables podcast live on YouTube, my friends. get to our uh revolution predictions here um so if you guys uh haven't already go sign up for fallscountanywhere.com it's a super easy way to do predictions uh currently there are 40 people entered so we're going to be 41 when we do ours here uh so let's go ahead and get started the first one up is the eight star eight or, i'm sorry all-star eight man scramble match jericho lance archer brian cage powerhouse hobbs wardlow hook or someone not listed i believe that is uh magnus or what was his name magnus right magnus yeah uh, i'm going with wardlow for sure on this one i yeah. can't see any reason to bet against wardlow right now i swear to the lord if christopher jericho wins this match Oh, I will not be happy. I'll roast the shit out of that if that Look, happens. I, I'm expecting tomorrow to be an absolute great night, so I don't want to be super down on it. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say Wardlow should win this and will win this. Yeah. All right, next up, the tag team match. FTR, Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood versus the Blackpool Combat Clubs, Claudio Castagnoli and John Moxley. Ugh. So... <laughs> Crazy. This is gonna sound really crazy, and and I'll 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 take the roasting for it. I'll, I'll you can cook me. It's fine. I don't know why. I don't care about this match at all. Maybe it's like the kind of poor build to it, but like, I feel like I should definitely be hyped for this match, and I don't care about it at all. Like, <laughs> it's like, hey, this match sounds like it's gonna be a banger. I don't give a shit about it. I'm not like I'm not that down on it. I'm just kind of like, all right, that should be fine. You know what I mean? But I, I agree, it could have been a little built a little better. I think that the BCC will win. You got Blackpool Combat Club. This yeah. is one of the ones that seems real tough for me to uh, pick. This one. Um, I'm a big time FTR fan, so I'm gonna go with FTR here. It's been a while since we've seen Moxley and Claudio lose, so. Next up, singles match, Kanosuke Takeshita, Will Ospreay, the in-fight for the Don Callis family. Um, I haven't seen Ospreay lose a match yet in AEW. Uh, can't see him losing this one either. I think it's going to be incredible. I got Will Ospreay. It's going to be it's gonna be a really, really bust out the stars. This is going to be a seven-star seven match. Oh, for um, real. You know, I think... It can go either way. It really depends on when they want to split up Osprey from the Callus family. Um, yeah. I think it makes sense to bring Osprey in and have him win his first match, so I'm also going to pick Osprey. All right, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next up, singles match, AEW TNT Championship, Christian Cage versus Daniel Garcia. Um, go ahead on this one. So I think that there is a real a really good story to be told here by having Daniel Garcia win. However, uh, I do think that we're waiting for Adam Copeland to come back from injury. And as we've seen in the past, Tony Khan will be stubborn with his long-term booking. He will absolutely make us wait until he can execute on the vision that he has. Because of that and that alone, I think Christian Cage retains this championship match in this match. All right. I have a weird feeling that this match doesn't actually happen and that Adam Copeland somehow comes in and takes his spot back. Is he, like, actually injured? Like, do we know he has a legit injury or... I think he's actually hurt, but also, Jeff, that would be a very un-Tony Khan thing to do to... to 
promote a match and then not do it and also that would be really shitty for garcia that would be that would not be yeah good. that's true that would be pretty shitty for garcia so I'll, I'll just assume the match is gonna happen i'll go with christian cage as well all right next up we got a singles match the aew continental championship uh oh wait this is the eddie kingston one so it is that uh triple crown what do they call that exactly the Continental Crown. The Continental Crown Championship. There we go. Uh, Eddie Kingston versus Brian Danielson. Uh, this is going to be insane. They are going to beat the ever-living shit out of each other. Yeah. Uh, my See, this is a heart-brain one where it's like my heart says one thing, my brain says the other. My brain says Eddie Kingston wins and finally earns the respect of Brian Danielson before Danielson retires. Yeah. My heart says it's his last year, man. Belt Danielson up <laughs> for his last year. That would year. be a good belt for him to win to be honest. And then Eddie have a come back and get it back. I mean not not too yeah, bad. I yeah, I mean I just think it would be good. Uh hello from Japan. I cannot read your name cuz it is in Japanese kanji and I apologize. Oh, there it is. My name is uh Motoki. Welcome Motoki. Very nice to see you here. Drop an elbow on that like button for us. Um, dude, I really want what you just said to happen. I want Danielson to take that belt and just talk mad shit for a month or two. And then Eddie fight to get it back. Yeah. Oh, please give me that. I'm going with Danielson. <laughs> what did you say you were taking? I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to vote with the brain. So Eddie King, Eddie. Yeah. That is awesome. Motoki, we are huge fans of the uh, NJPW here as well. Um, oh, you can't see it right now, but I got the uh, the belts right here above me from NJPW, actually. Next up, AEW singles match, the Women's World Championship, Tony Storm versus Diana Parasso. Um, you know, as much as my heart feels like they're going to strap up Diana Parazzo here, I can't see them taking the belt off of Tony Storm while we have this Mariah May storyline going on. So I'm going to be going with Tony Storm to retain here. That's a real hard one. It is. It's it really a, is. It's a really hard one. I think. I think that it makes sense for the landscape of the division to possibly shake things up and have Deanna Parazzo defeat Tony Storm. Um, yes, Tony Storm is doing the best work of her career. However, I think that over the next few weeks, you're going to be bringing in Mercedes Monet. There's rumors that they may bring in Camille. Oof. There's, there's, oh. you know, keep in mind, we're still waiting on Jamie Hayter to come back. We're still waiting on uh, Britt Baker to come back. Like, there's so many, like, the women's division is about to be, to go so goddamn hard that it makes a lot of sense for me, at least in my mind, to say, okay, women's division, we're hitting the reset button in a way where, like, Deanna Barazzo is the champion now. Let's start getting this women's division running on all cylinders. Maybe Hikaru Shida's coming back. I mean, Riho's obviously back in, in the company. Uh, I think Yuka Takazaki should be coming in soon as well. Like, there's a lot of moving parts that are all kind of maybe converging at the same time. And I just think it makes a lot of sense to, you know, have Deanna come in and kind of like real shake shake up the uh, hierarchy of the division. So I, I think it makes a lot of sense. The storytelling is really good for this feud. I would not be surprised to be wrong here. Um, Tony Storm winning is still like a very safe bet. I would not... I would not bet a nickel on this match just because I <laughs> have how uncertain I am about it. But I would just say I'm leaning to what's wrong with Britt Baker. I apparently she apparently Britt Baker had to stay home and take care of Adam Cole, even though Adam Cole was at TV for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> that made sense. Um, she know. really so, does yeah. though. He's basically on crutches still. Yeah, except yeah, but except for like he was at TV for a good month and a half. Yeah. So it's like, well, all right. All right. Uh, let's go on here. I really do hope Deanna Parazzo wins. Like, I'll be happy to be wrong on this prediction. So 
even though Tony Storm's her character right now, her talent, it just seems endless, dude. Like everything she well, does feels like another evolution of her own character. I mean, well, so here's my other here's my other counter argument as to why it would make sense for them to move away from Tony Storm or move the belt away from Tony Storm is like clearly as we saw tonight, Tony Storm threw Mariah May into danger and has yet to really give two shits about Mariah May. Yeah. Um, so that match is coming and it would make a lot of sense for Tony Storm losing her title to really set this into motion. That's not a bad uh, way to put it. Okay, I can you see that. You could also argue, though, that if Mercedes is coming in and they want Mercedes to win the championship, then and Tony would hold on to it until Mercedes got here. I like what Nat says. Have Mariah cost Tony the belt, and then that gives them to a reason to have a feud without the belt, and Deanna Parazzo moves forward with the belt against uh, Mercedes or, you know, whomever. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Uri Motoki. I like that name a lot. Motoki. Love it. Uh, Yeah, Coog. Riho's back, dude. Riho's back. I can't wait for Yuki. Or Yuka. Yuka Sakazaki. Can't wait. AEW. Crazy if true. Oh, love it. This women's division is going to be insane over this next uh, couple months when everybody's back. Like, we don't even have uh, Jamie Hayter back yet. My God. Oh. Grant, I, I think that the vision for Wembley is going to be another four-way dance. But instead of what we had last year, I think it's going to be Mercedes. I mean, honestly, if, oh, we'll just say you go singles match. I would do Mercedes versus um, Jamie Hayter. I think that's the match. Oh, yeah, you got to have Jamie Hayter there. She was supposed to be there last year. Unfortunate she wasn't. Um, but, yeah. All right, next up, singles match, AEW International Championship, Orange Cassidy versus Roderick Strong. I'm going with my boy Orange Cassidy here. I'll be upset if Roderick boring-ass Strong wins this. It all depends on what they want to do with the Undisputed Kingdom. If they, if Tony's, if Tony Khan's going to stubbornly double down on this faction, I think that Roderick Strong is going to win. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. It's not what I would do. But I think if they're going to follow this storyline, it's what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, that being said, if Tony may be considering breaking down the faction or like maybe just not doing it, then, you know, maybe Orange Cassidy retains. I would like for Orange Cassidy to retain. Me too. My thing about Roderick Strong is he is not an international talent is the way that I look at him. So that's why I don't think he should win. But I do, uh, I've been waiting for this question because I wanted to give you a, uh, or wanted to give you my prediction for who is going to be the next international champion. Mm. Trent Beretta. I feel like they're positioning him right now to turn on at least Orange Cassidy. It looks like he's been feeling like the third wheel a lot. You know what I mean? Um, I have a feeling... Trent's going to take that belt from Orange Cassidy and he is absolutely an international talent. He could take that over to new Japan and, you know, make a few runs over there. I don't think best friends are going to split up. So I disagree with that. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I can see that, but it's been a while and I know Tony yeah. loves Trent, you know what I mean? And we'll see. All right. Next up. Triple threat match for the AEW World Championship. Samoa Joe versus Hangman. Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland. Who you got, Rome? I mean, look, man. I think that a great thing about this pay-per-view is that I think that from top to bottom, there is a lot of uncertainty around the card and who's going to win these matches. And I think that as much as it's fun to predict and we love doing the predictions... When we sit here and, and and are just stumped by the possible outcomes, yeah, I think that's when it's at its best. Absolutely. That being said, I think that you look at this match, and there is a legitimate argument to be made for each of these three guys to win tomorrow. But it just it just feels like it swerves time. One hundred percent. I think that. He, the dude is just extremely over right now. He's 
a star. There's just so many reasons. He's an excellent wrestler since coming to the company and, you know, signing in 2022. I think he signed at, I want to say it was Revolution 2022, or it might have been Full Gear 2022. Regardless, he signed in 2022, and since then, he dude's been a part of, Everything the dude's done has been very good outside of the first incarnation of the embassy, or I'm sorry, out of the um, the Mogul affiliates, and that was more so because of the people that Tony Khan put with him, rather than him. Um, so, I think that it's just time. I think that there's a really good story here where you let Hangman go down this crazy, I'm insane route. And then his redemption arc can end with him taking the title off of Swerve and finally picking up that win against him. That promo um, earlier in the night, that insane hangman, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. But I, I, that's just what I would say. Um, see, here's the thing, Grant. Like, Grant says Joe wins. He's not going to lose it already. We, I think that there was a legitimate change of plan in the company after CM Punk was fired. I don't think that Joe was supposed to be the guy to take the belt off of MJF at World's End. MJF was hurt. I think Joe was just... No, I, I think... Yeah. I honestly think... And, you know, again, he's my guy. There's a lot of lot of bias here. I honestly think CM Punk was meant to take the belt off MJF. Oh, and wow. Okay. I think that you could argue that if the devil thing was still a plan as well, maybe CM Punk was supposed to be that guy all along. I don't know. Yeah. My, I just think that it was really weird how they had MJF fight, uh, face Joe at Arthur Ashe in September. And then they moved Joe away from the feud a little bit. And then they moved Joe back to the feud. That seemed very like, it just seemed off. And I'm not upset that Joe's the world champion. I think Joe has been a phenomenal world champion. I do, th- I do see Joe though as kind of um, a transitional champion in a sense. Where it's I, like, I, yeah, and it's not a bad thing. Like, it's like Joe has been incredible, and Joe is incredible, and he deserves 100%. to win the world title. But not every world title reign, not every title reign, needs to be this long six, seven, eight, nine month ordeal. It just, it just doesn't. Like we've seen it in AEW before, where. Sometimes these guys and girls, they win the titles, and then, like, what happens? They just become stagnant. They hold the title for too long, and then you're just kind of like, you end up hating them. Like, I just, like, I see this, of course, online a lot. Uh, People feel this way pretty often about AEW champions, where it's like, you know, people started to sour on MJF. People started to sour on Thunder Rosa. People started to sour on, like, other people. Like, it just, it just kind of happens where, Sometimes they hold the belt a little too long. But Rome, um, you mean you don't want Joe to hold the belt for a thousand days? Like No, no, I don't. Well, why? Come on. It wouldn't make sense. But I don't know. So I, I think it's Swerve's time. And I think that there's a great story to be told later down the line between Swerve and Hangman again. Um so yeah, that's that's what I would do. I'd I would have Swerve win tomorrow. Now here's an interesting thing though. The Observer, and again, it's The Observer, so officially for now on, The Observer has the asterisk next to it, but The Observer is claiming that Sting and Darby versus the Bucks is going on last tomorrow. Hell yeah. So that, that's the main event, as far as The Observer has been told. Um, as it should be, to be honest. I really think I it should agree. be. I agree. But I still think it's going to be Swerve's time. Like, like if anybody wanted an explanation for why it should be main event, like even Samoa Joe should be like, you know, I'm yielding the main event spot to sting as respect. You know, it would be something cool like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 All right. Let's go to our next one here. Uh, I I picked Swerve Strickland. Is that who you were going with as well? Yes. Yeah, me too. All right. Next up the tornado tag team match, the AEW world tag team championship Darby Allen and Sting versus the Young Bucks, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. I think I know who you got. You got the Bucks winning, right? No. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Sorry. So yeah. I actually um, think for once in history, we're going to go out with somebody on top as the champ. I really want to see it. I hope it works out right if they do it. So I am actually going to be going with Darby and Sting here. So the reason that that's not going to happen, probably the biggest reason of all is uh, 
Darby did say in an interview this past week that Sting has 100% the call what they're doing with his last match. It was Sting's call to face the Bucks. Like Sting, like they, Tony said, Sting, what do you want to do? And we're doing what Sting wants to do for his last match. He's getting to go out on his terms. I find it hard to believe that Sting isn't going to end up doing the job here. I just don't. I just don't see it. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And like, hey, it would be really cool for the night to end with Sting and Darby standing tall as champions, and that's it. Like, regardless of whatever happens, you know, we know that next the next week is going to be kind of a reset button. We called World's End a reset button, but like, really, the next era of AEW starts at Revolution. Um, we're getting a whole new Dynamite set apparently on Wednesday. Um, bunch of stuff, but. I think that you go into that era with the EVPs as champion. I think that it just, it makes a lot of sense. You do, you do it in a way where like, look, it might not be pretty, you know, the bucks might really destroy sting to end his career. Um, But Darby, Darby is going to, it's going to make a lot more sense from a character perspective for Darby to feud with the bucks with them on top to start. Yeah. Um, like, because then what do you do? Does Darby come out and just relinquish the titles? Does Darby choose a new partner for the titles? Like, there's a lot of questions that you kind of get into there, and I don't really have a good answer. You know what? I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction right now. And maybe this will get heat. In fact, I know for a fact this would get heat with fans. I will predict that the EVPs are going to win the match due to outside interference from Jack Perry. From Jack Perry? Mm Mm-hmm. Why would he get involved with Sting? It's not that he's getting involved with Sting. It's that he's getting involved with his friends, the EVPs. They're his friends? Yep. Hey, maybe I'm wrong, but, you know, just remember this. If we're sitting there tomorrow. I mean, I'll give you your points, yeah, for sure. Give me my flowers. Uh, That's all I want. I just want my flowers. That's would it. be nice to see Okada. I don't think he shows up tomorrow, though. I think Okada shows up on uh, Mercedes Monet's night. That'd be cool if like they both came out together. And then Nat says it, and like yeah, because then you set up for Jack versus Darby. That's right. Aren't they both pillars? Is Jack a pillar? Yeah, Jack's a pillar. Hey, yeah. look. I'm just saying. I'm not guaranteeing it, but I see it. I see the future. And again, like it's gonna get a lot of heat. It would absolutely get a lot of heat, but it would also really protect. It would protect Sting too. Like, let's say for example, it looks like Sting and Darby are going to win the match, and then Jack comes in and smashes Sting with the belt. I'm, like, yeah. I'm just saying, it would generate a lot of heat, and it would definitely enter this new regime of this yeah. heel elite group. I, I just think it makes sense. I'm not, just, you know, listen, I'm not doubting you. It's hard to argue with you right now. I mean, let's not forget that I, I, you know, we retired the belt, but I was the reigning defending world champion of predictions. Uh, I just, I, I, you know, I retired the belt to the trophy case. It's right there. No one could take it from me. So I just retired it. You know, I got tired. I got bored. You know what? Throwing in the trophy case. Nat is correct. They did make a comment about the EVPs getting their friends hired. Now it actually makes sense. It's not so random. When you get it spelled out for you there, Grant, it's not so random, huh? Damn. I see it now. All right, all right. Remember to give me the flowers. Just remember. Jack I actually Green. think you have, like, more than a 50% chance to be right. I think you're on, on track there. Bring the bouquet. That's all I'm saying. Fuck. Fucking Jack. Bring the bouquet. Now, I won't like it. Absolutely not. I'm going to hate it. I fucking hate Jack Perry. But it's going to happen. I used to watch his dad on Beverly Hills 90210 like 100 years ago. Just saying, you know. It's going to happen. All right. Well, those are our predictions um, for Revolution. Um, there are more questions up there. If you go to fallscountanywhere.com and make your predictions, uh, it's about how each person wins the matches. I'll finish my predictions later, but you know, we got our, uh, predictions out there for who's going to win or lose each match. Um, 
I know there was something I wanted to go over here tonight, but I have completely lost it. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to go over here tonight, Rome? Uh, no. I, he I says yes. <laughs> I think it's it's pretty much true. Uh, that's factual, Nat. Absolutely. You only hate Jack because he got punk fired. Yes. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Grant says, me too. Luke Perry was so cool. Oh, dude, the leather jacket, man. Like, yeah, Luke Perry was the man. All right, well, uh, unless I somehow remember what I wanted to talk about, uh, go ahead and uh, close us out here, sir. Absolutely. This has been episode 204 of the Broken Tables podcast. Thank you to everyone hanging out with us here tonight. We had a great turnout. We really appreciate all of you. It means a lot to us that you uh, come and hang out with us here on a Saturday night talking about pro wrestling. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, uh, become a member to the channel, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Uh, that way you can be everywhere we are, so that way you can talk pro wrestling with us after the show ends. Uh, you know, the Discord is usually pretty good for have, starting a conversation. I feel like whether it's... Uh, Coog up until two in the morning or me up at six in the morning because of my job or whatever it is like there's always somebody to talk pro wrestling with there so you should definitely get in on that um i, I love all the stuff i love all the stuff Coog usually... posts till two in the morning i don't respond but i read it <laughs> well so like i wake up my day usually starts with me checking my phone and like i i get I, I go on the discord and i look at all the stuff that Coog posts while i was sleeping i wake up and i'm like Okay, Coog posted in the New Japan, the AW uh, channels. I take a look at it. Um, it's a good way to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> so show up like 15 minutes before for the pre-show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we will be live tomorrow for the pre-show, or not the pre-show, for the entire show for AW Revolution. I think that this is a the potential to be probably one of their better pay-per-views ever. So very excited for that here. We will be live probably about 15 minutes before the pre-show. Like Nat said, that's a that's a good bet. Uh, Jeff will create the the live stream tomorrow with the scheduled time, so you know when we'll go live. Um, other than that, you know, if you like video games, we do the Game Room podcast on our other channel. You should subscribe to that where we talk all about video games. We will be live on Monday night. A really fun show lined up. Interesting. We're going to be talking about the fallout of the layoffs from ea and playstation and how what game developers are doing to fight back and gain their independence we have like four or five stories like that which kind of crazy Dude, there's um, been like twenty thousand people laid off in the gaming industry just this year this is insane yep and it's it just turned to march yep so we've been talking about all that and we're going to continue to do that as well so you know again subscribe to both our channels Video games, wrestling, we do both of that. We do the Dynamite review next Wednesday. And then we're right back here next Saturday with our Collision review again. Exciting time for the channel. Uh, but until next time, which is tomorrow, we'll see you guys later. All right. Well, like Rome said, thank you guys very much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, until next time, top guys, out.